So we, we are here today with me, Joe Grumbine, Daisy Brand, Dan Reeder, and Eric Salarno. We are all in a similar situation. Um, Eric, Daisy, and I are defendants, and Jen works in a law office. And we have all decided to join forces um, as the human solution. And we're here to show support for each other as defendants, as cannabis defendants. Uh, Daisy here is fighting in a particular arena with CPS being involved as they yank their kids from her. Um, Eric's fighting a, a, a dispensary, a collective, a case up in Northern California, and I'm doing a similar thing. Um, we all believe that these cases are ridiculous. We all believe that no one should ever go to jail for a plant, and we all believe that if everybody stood up and fought, that at one point, they're going to stop pushing. And so that's why we've all kind of come here together. Each of us has this warrior spirit in our, ourselves, and we all wake up every day. And we all decide we're just going to change the world. We're going to win this thing. And every day we get charged up. And I personally right now feel just so blessed to have been joining forces with these warriors because it just makes me electrified. When I get electrified, <laughs> I'm telling Shit, you, we're going to make Lord, some things are going to happen yeah, now. Exactly. So, why don't you guys all, let's just go down the row and you say a little word about why we're here and what, what this means to you. How about you? Um, yeah, I, I think one of the things that's really, really important in our case, it's really worth noting, is the secret that uh, we didn't know anybody, not a soul, not even, you know, the woman that ran the grow shop and maybe the lady that ran the supermarket or the, you know, the, the gas station in our house. And, and through social media and people really, really being concerned, I've been able to assemble this massive community. Thousands of people probably were offering us so much support. So I've really learned firsthand how priceless um, and soul-sustaining uh, uh, the support of the community is. And so I've, I've really become passionate about making sure that people understand how critical this is. Just your presence is. And how important it is that we all stick together. And it's not about finances or or tangible things that you can offer, sometimes just as simple, I'm here for you, I am I'm following your case, I'm paying attention, and, and just the, uh, you know, paying attention is really important. So I'm really, really excited to be part of an important project that brings people together. Um, I, I began fighting my case after delivering medical marijuana to a valid collective member who drove uh, a good distance to come see us. Um, the judge in my case denied my defense. Uh, I had to fire my lawyer in the courtroom and uh, file a writ of mandamus. And um, a stay was issued. And I'm lucky enough to have my medical marijuana defense uh, allowed now, and I can continue fighting my case. Uh, October 30th of this month, my trial begins. So anybody who wants to come out, of course, courts really appreciate it. Uh, all the cool kids are doing it. All the kids, cool kids are doing it. Court support all the way. I got involved because I had a family member that was a victim of the drug war and went to prison for marijuana. And I decided after that happened that it's just really not okay that no one ever, ever, ever should go to jail for marijuana. Ever. Ever. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Um, one of the things I think is really important that I really enjoy about my job is that is really coming to know my clients, that they're people. Um, Joe just introduced himself to somebody and said, no, I'm a defendant. And I was thinking, no, you're a person. And I think that gets lost a lot in the courtroom because you know, these, these people who are growing plants or using plants medicinally, you know, doing everything they can to abide by what our state says is legal, and yet they're getting prosecuted and they're being called criminals, but really they're just people. And I think putting a face these people who are victims of the drug war, I think giving them a face and showing people that they are they have families, they have children, they have wives and friends, really kind of gives us a unique advantage because then the public has a chance to see these are not criminals. These are people. And you know, you look at Daisy and her children, I mean, she's not a criminal. You look at Joe, he's a family man. Eric's got kids as well. I mean, they're families. These are families that are being persecuted in such an unjust fashion that it's absolutely horrendous. And anything that I can do to help stop that is, I'll do, basically. And so, when we talk about court support, you know, it's not just for the defendant. 
when you show up at court, number one, you are helping the defendant. Every time I turn around as a defendant or a supporter and our eyes cross, connect, it's there's, a, there's just a bond. You're, you're making a difference to a human being. The second thing that happens at court support is you get educated. Every single person that comes to court walks out of there at one point going, oh my God, I can't believe they did that. The things that happen in our justice system are not what you think. And every single person that sat in any medical marijuana case has at one point said, wait, they can't do that. And they do. And so the key to this whole movement is education. We need to educate each other. We need to educate ourselves. And if you see what happens, why we're fighting, why we have this tears in our eyes, this passion in our hearts, you'll get moved to do the same. So that's why we're here. So, Okay, one more thing. Add one something to that. Please. Another thing is, is that we're also educating the prosecution in a lot of way and the judges. There's been many, many cases where the attorney that I work for, Michael Levinson, and I have gone into court, and we're educating the judges on the marijuana laws. They don't know. And the other thing about court support is the judges notice. Yes. If you come in and they see all these people, they see the community, they see the family members, it humanizes the people that are being persecuted. And the jury's notice, the judges notice, the prosecution notice. It doesn't go unnoticed. It benefits everyone. And it shows community strength. And they can't, you know, ignore it. The more people we have there, the more support we show, the more we bring ourselves together as a community and show sort of a solid front. They can't ignore it. That's true. And, and even, you know, in the worst case scenario, the worst prosecutors, the worst judges, even the worst jurors, they're humans. Every single one of them. And even bad people, somehow you can reach through it. You look them in the eye every day, day after day, and, and at one point I believe you can reach them. I've seen it happen. I've seen, I've seen prosecutors take a different tack. I've seen prosecutors get so thrown off by it that they don't know what to do. They almost explode. I've seen judges really stop and, and notice and say, wow, you know, maybe we should think about this. I've seen the judge postpone a sentencing for two weeks to just reconsider because of all the people that were there. Over and over again, when we show up, we make a difference. So that's what we're asking is let's make a difference. And thank you very much. Bring humanity back to the justice system. Yes, absolutely. And hopefully let's bring some justice back as well. Well, that too, yeah. <laughs> let's give Lady Justice her scales and her blindfold yes. back. Yeah.